Hey guys, SK here, back with another Clash Royale video, and today we are going to be playing a card that wholeheartedly, with every little shred of essence, defines the word broken. I am talking about the Archer Queen, one of the three newly released champions with the champion update. We are running her in 3 Pinot Expo cycle in place of the Archers. We will be pushing top 1000 ladder today and seeing just how she fares. Now the Archer Queen's base stats aren't anything too out of the ordinary, she very closely resembles the stats of a Musketeer. The reason this card is so ridiculously strong is because of her ability, Cloaking Cape, that costs only one elixir. All champions came with their own unique abilities, but the Archer Queen's has evidently taken the cake for the most overpowered one by far. This ability makes her completely invisible, rendering her untargetable by any troops or towers. While she's in this mode, you'll be forced to spell her down or distract her with troops that can't target her back. She has 897 damage per second at the max level, which is just asinine. There is nothing else that can parallel this pure unfiltered DPS in the entire game. She can also use this ability many times in the same sequence due to its incredibly low cooldown of only 11 seconds. I'm of the opinion that she is in desperate need of an emergency nerf, but we'll see if the team ends up doing something about it. So I'm running the Electra Spirit right now and not the Ice Spirit in this deck, and the reason for that is because there's currently a game-breaking clone glitch, an explanation of which will be shown on the screen right now. I do think the Ice Spirit is still better overall though. Unfortunately, neither of my spirits are max level, but they can still get the job done pretty well, just not on offense. With all of that out of the way, feel free to let me know what your personal thoughts are on the Archer Queen in the comments below. You can also share your thoughts on the other heroes, and if you think they'll work well on Expo Cycle, or any other deck. I've already uploaded quite a few shorts on YouTube showcasing just how broken her ability can be in different situations, so my opinion's pretty clear. Anyways, let's get right into the games, and I hope you enjoy the video. Alright, and we're in our first match against Ennio from Maple Miners. I am about 99% sure he's going to be playing Minor Poison. We did just cycle our E-Spirit, he cycled his Fire Spirit, uh, and Log and Skeletons. He's going to go for a Miner right now to pull our Knight back. Uh, so we're going to go for an E-Spirit on the e -Wiz and go for a Queen to take care of it. And let's see what he's going to have for it. So, we are probably going to use her ability here. He's going to go for a Valk. So as you can see, that just completely shuts down the Valk with absolutely nothing he can do. Um, he's probably going to go for just Skeletons for our Knight. We are going to set up an Expo now that Valk is out of hand. He's going to go for Inferno Tower, but we are back to Knight. And he's probably going to Miner. So we're just going to E-Spirit to catch it and then log it back. And that should be a pretty substantial connection. Um, good thing the Fire Spirit locked on to our Knight as well. That is going to be even more of a push for us, and I think he's going to be pretty low on Elixir right now, so we're actually going to pressure with an Archer Queen at the bridge. This does seem like a really silly play, but I have actually seen it work. As you can see, we force out a Valk, and she just fully takes care of it, and is actually going to lock onto Tower as well. So, that just got a lot of damage. Um, he is obviously not happy about it. I mean, Queen is pretty broken, just the fact that you can just play it at the bridge like that when the opponent's low on Elixir is just says a lot. So he's going to go for a Miner. I think we are just going to Expo again, um, since he just wasted Miner. He's probably going to go for a low Inferno, which we can just Fireball. Um, important to Fireball so that we also get Tower Chip. And he's going to go for a Valk, we're just going to log it, and then we have to let this Expo go, unfortunately. But that's completely fine, as you can see his tower is very low, and we actually get another tiny connection. So he might Poison with- no, he goes for a Predictive Fireball with that Miner. We're going to Knight to block the Fire Spirit, and at this point, uh, I know our Firewall does 274 damage, so we can just slowly Spell Cycle. Um, so we're just going to Firewall, and we're going to activate the ability uh, into his Valk, which will fully take care of his Valk. And I feel like he's going to Miner at the back again, so we're in a Predictive Tesla at the back as we do catch the Miner, so perfect. He does Fireball, but we are back to a Fireball of our own and a Log will just fully take care of this. So he is spamming emotes, he is very unhappy, I mean kind of understandably so. Um, we were able to force out the Valk at the start, and from there we just got a really nice connection. So plus 34 trophies, that is quite a lot, which means he was a fair amount higher than us. Um, but yeah, very nice first game. Puts us at 925th in the world, so let's keep it going as we look for the next match, and we find it right away actually against TKHT from Twilight Story. 
I'm gonna give him the good luck. I believe he's actually at the trophies that we were at before the previous match, or maybe right now, I'm not sure. Um, like I said before, I think, or maybe I didn't, but our e-spirit is unfortunately not maxed, which means we can't exactly play it at the bridge to get chip. He actually thought it was maxed just now, so he plays a mega minion into it. And as you can see, we don't give the king activation up. He goes for a cannon cart. I think we are going to expo. Simply because Archer Queen is going to be able to fully take care of this cannon cart um, in the left side. We're just going to use her ability here, and we get a really nice connection as well. So, he went for a Lumberjack Barb Barrel. He's going to go for a Baby Dragon now. We're going to go for Skeletons, just to distract it for a bit. And Archer Queen actually gets as much damage as our Expo connection um, in the left. So, that is pretty insane. But this is looking very much like a Golem deck. Golem Cannon Cart, so I think he's going to have E-Drag, no big spell, maybe even E-Barbs. Um, but we are back to Expo, so depending on what he cycles, he's going to go for a Golem. I think we're just going to defend this, um, since he should be pr back to Cannon Cart any time now, so we don't really want to risk going in and also being forced to defend. We're going to go for an Archer Queen to the side to take care of this E-Drag as well. Um, we don't need to use the ability. Okay, we're going to use the ability now. Since he did just NATO, we want to take care of that E-Drag. And it looks like it is still going to chip our Archer Queen, which is interesting, I guess. Um, so that can still hit it, even though it's invisible. Um, but we are, I believe we are going to be up Elixir now, since our opponent just cycled a Barb Barrel. So we're going to go for an Expo and Knight to predict his Cannon Cart. And I don't think he's going to have enough for a Lumberjack right away. Um, he might be back to it now, especially now that it's double Elixir. It looks like he is not. So we're going to go for a log, e-spirit to um, electrify it for a bit, and then just get some nice damage. That is actually probably going to be spell cycle range, though we can kind of keep up pressure with an offensive expo, since we have the support of the Archer Queen. And he goes for a low golem. I don't believe that's actually going to tank for the expo, so expo is actually just going to take tower, which is really nice there. And Archer Queen is just getting some insane DPS on the golem. So this is going to be a pretty big push, though. He's probably going to go for stuff behind this, um, so we do have to defend that. Nope, he's actually going to go opposite lane, which is pretty well played, since I wasn't expecting it. We can just go for a fireball. Looks like my log actually pushed the cannon cart out of range, which is pretty awkward, but it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, we can just still defend and just get back to a fireball to ensure the defense at the end here. So, good game. Uh, that got a bit sketchy at the end, since our opponent made a pretty good play, not supporting the golem and rushing opposite lane instead. And I did miss my fireball, but again, not too big of a deal, since we did have the cheap cycle and we got back to a Tesla to stop it all. That puts us at top 900 in the world now. Um, as you can see, Archer Queen is doing a lot of work. Um, I might have been better off if I used her ability earlier on in the first defense against the E-Drag, um, but either way that was still pretty good, but let's go for the next match and see what we match up against. I might have to cut this if the queue time gets too long, but we'll see. Alright, and we're into the next match against Creed from Magic... Okay, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. We'll give him the good luck back and see what he's going to be running for us. He goes for a Lava Hound first place, so I'm actually worried this is going to be Lava Clone, potentially. Um, Lava Clone has been making the rounds recently. If you guys don't know, there is a game-breaking clone glitch right now. And he goes for Barbs. I think we are just going to Queen and use her ability. I think it's going to be cheaper than using the Log, and it should get us pretty much the same result. So we're going to Fireball the Lava Hound plus the Skeleton Dragons now. Thankfully, we hit both. And he's going to Miner onto our Queen. Unfortunately for him, we are going to be able to just activate her Invisibility Cloak and get away from that. So, it looks like Archer Queen does one-shot Lava Pup. So that is a really nice interaction as well. Um, let's see what he's going to have for this Counter Push. Because I am feeling like I can use this ability right now. And that is going to be Tower. So, that is just absolutely ridiculous. This is looking like it's it might not be a... Lava Clone variant, it might just be a Lava Hound deck. Um, he's going to go for a Lava. We're going to Expo again, uh, since we are back to it in Cycle. And he's going to go for an Inferno. 
I did waste my e-spirit there. I thought that it wouldn't target the skeletons first, but still, we're going to go for a Tesla in this position. As you can see, this works out really nicely since the Lava Hound is kind of stuck defending the Expo, and the Tesla can kind of DPS it down. And we're going to use our Queen's ability here just to make sure the Loon doesn't get any drops on us. And that is just ridiculous. Um, he might minor now, but I don't think he should since... Yeah, he's just going to give up. I honestly understand. Um, this deck, this card is just ridiculous. But we're going to support this uh, and just try and 3-crown. Archer Queen did actually make 3-crowning with Expo significantly easier because... We can just use her ability as she's on the king, and that does, I think, like, how much does that do? Like, half of its health, if not more? That looked like at least 3,000 damage, uh, but yeah, that is yet another 3 crown. Um, well, not yet another, but kind of yet another easy victory for us, putting us at Royal Champion 7,600 trophies um, at top 800 in the world, so new league reached. That was not a Lava Clone deck, that was actually the OG kind of Lava Hound Miner deck that was popular back in the No Tilt um, World Championship 20 win challenge, if you guys remember that time period. But uh, yeah, Archer Queen just simplified that matchup so much, just trivialized every part of it. it used to involve perfect defense, had to worry about arrows since they do one-shot your archers, but none of that applies when we have the Archer Queen. Um, but that was a really straightforward win. Looking like two nice wins against Beatdown. Um, we did actually... We were at 7,525 trophies, and both of these opponents were as well, so that's just kind of an interesting detail I noticed. But let's keep it going and get into the next match. Alright, and we're into the next match against LTJG Copyright from KSA. I'm gonna cycle Skeletons. And see what he's going to have. He's going to have Bandit. I think we are just going to Archer Queen this. Since Knight isn't in cycle, we can use E-Spirit to make sure it doesn't charge onto it. And looks like he is surprised at our maxed out Archer Queen, but he has the same thing. So we're probably going to use our ability here um, on his Queen. He goes for a Bar Barrel, so we're going to Fireball this, I think. And then Knight on top of the Queen, hopefully, instead of the Ghost. Alright, perfect. And we are going to Expo since he just spent quite a lot of Elixir, I would say. Uh, he shouldn't have enough for P.E.K.K.A. if that's the deck he's running. Or he shouldn't be back to an Archer Queen, I believe. So we're going to E-Spirit to catch the Bar Barrel. And it should only get one hit on our Expo. Perfect. And we get a connection. So let's see if he's going to commit to this. As he does, I think that was a mistake. We are probably going to punish him now with the same Archer Queen at the bridge play. A very skilled play. He goes for a ghost. We are going to use our ability. Does basically take care of most of the ghost, and we get a ton of tower damage. So that is Archer Queen in a nutshell for you. Um, so this is looking like a bridge bam deck, maybe Pekka, with Archer Queen instead of Magic Archer, since he does have the ghost and all the other standard components. Um, he goes for a ram at the bridge, and then a bandit. Looks like he's just spamming, hoping that we're low or something, but we're really not. Um, and we don't want to queen at the bridge now since he has Barb Barrel. That's going to be a pretty good answer. So we can actually just reset here, and we have a very good position. He's going to queen, so we're going to see if our tower can get one shot on it, and then fireball. We don't want to take any risk whatsoever with that card. We're going to queen at the bridge now just for fun. Honestly, why not? He goes for a ghost again. Ability up. And Skeletons will finish off the Ghost. She does also fully finish off the Battle Rams Ram form, so that should pose basically no threat on offense. Um, he goes for a Magic Archer, so he does have Magic Archer. Maybe he doesn't have a big spell then. We're going to Defensive Expo instead of Fireball, uh, since the Expo might just fully take care of it, and if not, we can just Fireball after. Yep, as I predicted, uh, he just lets our Expo basically take out the Magic Archer. We are going to E-Spirit. And we're going to fireball this Archer Queen now, and log as well. As I said, I don't want to take any chances whatsoever with that card. And we are going to use our ability now. She does fully take care of this uh, Battle Ram, and she should get two hits on the tower now. So that is already basically in Spell Cycle range. We can start to log cycle, 
He goes for a ghost. Uh, we're just going to go for a knight. And that should be about... That's the, well, that's definitely three fireballs, but it could also be... Not sure how many logs, honestly. Uh, we're going to E-Spirit just to keep the Tesla alive, though I'm not sure if we needed to. Uh, but we do have a counter-pushing queen now. He goes for a queen of his own, so we're actually going to Expo opposite now. Since he doesn't have queen in cycle for it. We're going to Knight to catch the Royal Ghost. Log the e was back, catch the Barb Barrel, and that should be game. So that's a pretty nice match against what looked to be Queen Bridge Bam. Um, we did kind of play pretty passively. Well, we played pretty aggressively, but we played pretty safe, I would say, against uh, his queen. As I said, we just... Fireball Log does not kill the queen, but Fireball Log plus, I think, just about any other source of damage should take care of it. Since uh, I know E-Spirit Fireball Log kills it, and one tower shot does too. So if they kind of hesitate on the ability, even for a second, a... Fireball log plus a tower will just fully take it out. So nice win against Bridge Bam there. That does put us at top 650 in the world. I think we are going to keep it going and see if we can get a bit higher. All right, and we found a match against Hunt's Daddy uh, from Always Baked. Give him the good luck back and see what he has. We have a log, so we can just cycle that. He goes for Royal Hogs first play. Interesting first play. Um. And looks like he's unhappy, so we don't know what it's going to be, actually. It could be recruits. We are going to knight instead of cycling logs, since we are actually up one elixir. We want to kind of see what he has. Looks like it's going to be the royal... Okay, no, it's not. I was going to say it could be the royal hogs um, cycle deck, but it's actually going to be three musketeers. With skeletons, too. So let's see what else he's going to have. Archer Queen's ability should come in clutch against these two musketeers. Going to use it now. As he goes for an ice golem, but she does take care of two of those musketeers, and we are just going to e-spirit in front to support. I don't think we're going to use the ability here since she is basically in kill range. Yep, he goes for a log, and it fully takes care of it. We are going to go skeletons. Unfortunately, our Tesla was a bit late, so one royal hog does get to our tower. Um, but we are actually going to expo now. See what he's going to have. He shouldn't be back to 3M. He goes for e-spirit, and he might. He might be trying to get back to Royal Hogs. Nope, he goes for Hunter. So we're going to go Knight right in front to absorb most of the splash damage. And he goes for a Log as well. So we're just going to Log back as of our own and get a small little connection. This should be... I don't think this is going to be that great of a matchup since I believe this deck does run Fireball. Um, and they do have a really fast cycle as well. They have Ice Golem, Double Cycle cards, Log as well. So their cycle is actually faster than ours. Which is kind of unfortunate. We're going to cycle our Archer Queen now. And he might rush Royal Hogs opposite lane. So we'll have our Tesla at the ready if he chooses to do that. Nope, he goes for 3M. So we're going to go for an Expo now. Um, I believe Queen's ability supporting this should basically be able to take care of almost anything. We're going to use it now to basically take care of that Musketeer. And we are going to Fireball these two Musketeers. And that does get us a connection. So he's going to Royal Hogs now. He gives us the well played. Um, and we can just skeletons, we don't need to waste our Tesla. Since this is this is also going to be our healthier side tower. And he's basically calling GG already. Um, don't think he's going to give up, per se, but we do have a really nice lead. So, he's going to go for 3M up high. I think that was a mistake since we are back to Fireball. And we do just basically shred that. He gives us the good game. We are going to rush with a Queen opposite, uh, just to kind of pressure. As he goes for hogs at the bridge, but as you can see, Queen just takes care of so much of that, and we are going to be in the damage lead on the left too. So that is just how good the Queen is. Uh, just unbelievably good. Um, he goes for 3M at the bridge just as a last resort. I'm just going to fireball log that and give him the good game. Looks like he's a bit upset, but uh, that was a nice win against 3M. I think, so normally against 3M, if we had archers, for example, I would say that uh, the play I made with Expo when they go 3M is pretty aggressive and probably not the best play. But since we have Archer Queen supporting now, she can DPS pretty much anything down so fast that I think it is actually worth it. As you can see, we were able to get a really nice connection just because of the insane DPS, and then we got really nice fireball value on his Ice Golem and two Musketeers. So that was a positive elixir trade as well. But that puts us at just above top 500. We are one game away, assuming we get 30 trophies or so. 
one game away from 7,700 trophies, so I think we are going to try and get that. Uh, this is also our season highest and actually new personal best, though I can't say there's anything too exciting about it since we are using the Max Queen, which is insane, but um, what can I say? Let's get into the next match. Oh, and actually, before we go into the next match, we did just hit 100k gold um, from the Gold Rush, though it is a really low amount of gold gold rush you got like 1250 gold per tower which is really not much at all but we have enough to upgrade our log now and i don't think we're going to be needing a max level spirit um it basically does the same exact job just that we can't use it for chip at the bridge but i think that's fine and log should actually help us out against opposing log mirror matchups um i could also max my archers but since we are using queen i think i can just max my log now so we're gonna do that and get a nice level 14 log that looks really nice. It does 116 crown tower damage, which is 11 more than what it used to do at 105. Uh, but yeah, max log, so let's go now and try and get this last win against TK Gaming. Uh, in the good luck bag, and looks like he's trying to get to 8k trophies. So we'll just cycle skeletons in the back, see what he wants to play. And we do have a max log now, so that is really nice. Just that little bit of chip damage. He's going to go for a dark print, so... That could still be a bunch of decks. I'm not really going to say it's any deck in particular, just because of the dark prints. We're just going to play it pretty safely and see what he's going to have. He goes for a mega minion, so I believe this could be um, giant double prints. And I'm hoping it's not, because that is going to be a really scary matchup. But he goes for a zap as well, which kind of makes me think that it is going to be giant double prints. And he goes for a Mine or two. So, we are going to Expo now, I think. Uh, he did just go for a Zap and a Miner. So he should be down a fair amount of Elixir. Goes for a Prince as well. We're going to use our Queen's ability now, and Log, to make sure the Prince's uh, charge gets reset. And we're going to go for Skeletons to try and protect the Queen, unfortunately. Does not really work out. We're going to go for a Knight instead of Fireball to tank for the Mega Minion and E-Spirit to hopefully get rid of that, but unfortunately we were just a split second too late on the E-Spirit. So it is going to be Giant Devil Prince, a matchup that I am not a big fan of whatsoever. Um, he did play three cards since his Giant, I believe, so he shouldn't be back. I think we are just going to Expo and force probably an e was out. Nope, Dark Prince, and he's back to Giant now. We're going to log to make sure the Dark Prince doesn't get a charge onto our Expo. And that it gets taken out. And then we're just going to go Skeletons for the Giant. If he goes for a Zap, uh, we can just Knight afterwards. So not too big of a deal there. Giant gets one hit on the tower, which is fine. I think in this matchup, we're probably going to have to utilize our Archer Queen's ability. Though, unfortunately, the fact that he can just Firewall everything is going to be a bit unfortunate for us too. So we're going to go for an E-Spirit to reset this Prince's charge, and then go for the Archer Queen's ability to hopefully fully take out the Prince, as it does. Perfect. We're going to log to kill the e -Wiz. Back to Tesla now. And we are back to the Queen's ability as well. So we're going to be using that. And the Dark Prince is about to charge onto our tower. We're going to go for a Knight, since Mega Minion is also uh, getting there. We did just use our Knight, so I don't want to Expo since he is probably just going to be able to get a pretty decent counter push out of it. So we're just going to reset with a Tesla, I think. And then Archer Queen. And get ready for defending another push. So he's going to go for a Prince. Uh, we're not going to use our Queen's ability just yet. We're going to go E-Spirit as well. And we're going to use it now. Prince goes in front of the Giant, which is actually huge. And we're going to go for a Fireball Log on the E-Wiz. Fireball does take care of our Archer Queen, but our opponent did just use both his Giant and his uh, Fireball. So we're actually going to go in right now. And Tesla as well. He's going to be able to Miner, unfortunately, so that push, this push will not really do much. We're going to go for a Knight. Uh, I was thinking the Mega Minion would go to a tower, so that Knight was kind of just a precautionary measure there. Uh, but it is going to force that a response here as well, and we do have a surviving Tesla which can kind of deal with this. We're going to go for a log just to reset the Prince charge. And we are going to use our ability now to DPS down the Giant. And we're going to go for a Knight to catch the Miner, 
don't want any minor ship damage on our tower. Unfortunately, our Tesla isn't hitting the Ewas, so I'm not really going to go in since the Ewas did just take out a huge chunk of our knight's hit points. Um, and he shouldn't be back to a giant here, so not sure what that little small push was about with the Dark Prince Mega Minion, but we are going to Expo now. We have the Queen alive, and we do have her ability back. Actually, it looks like we're just barely not going to have her ability back, but we're going to use it now for sure. He's going to go for a Fireball, but the Queen actually, as you saw just now, just DPS down that miner big time, and that's actually huge. Looks like he's going to be uh, possibly getting back to a miner. I'm not sure, but we are going to fireball the Dark Prince, actually, because we kind of want to start getting damage on his tower, uh, since he is probably looking to outchip us. We are going to go for a queen, then go for a knight to kind of protect everything, and just log everything back. Queen's ability helps out big time as well. We are back to a knight. So we are going to use that, and then just Fireball Tower. And that's going to be a really nice win against Giant Double Prince. This is a matchup that I am extremely unfond of, um, especially with normal 3 Pinot Expo Cycle. Even just now, honestly, it was a bit stressful, but I think our opponent didn't play it very aggressively, and we were able to lean on our Archer Queen big time there, which was huge. So let's see if that was enough, and it was just enough to put us at 7,700 trophies, and top 500, which is just what we wanted, so perfect. Really nice game to finish things off there. Um, against our opponent, who, looking like he's going for 8,000 trophies. I am not sure if I'll go for 8k myself, but uh, this is a really good stopping point anyway, since there's basically only three days left in the season, so getting being able to get uh, pretty high is always a nice feeling. And, yeah, that just shows you the power of the level 14 Archer Queen. Um, it is just an absolutely insane card, and I do think it needs a big-time nerf. I think its base stats are pretty alright. It just seems like a Musketeer, pretty much, but the main issue with it is, of course, the ability, since not only does it go invisible, which means nothing can target it, even, even spells, uh, like Tornado doesn't fully kind of pull it, and Log sometimes doesn't even knock it back, so it's just very kind of weird with how the ability works, and the fact that basically nothing can get in its way. Um, you can use an e to kind of reset it if it's targeting the tower with the ability on, but then it'll just shred the e and that's a wasted 4 elixir. So the fact that this ability is just 1 elixir is just nuts, and I think that is for sure what they need to address 3.5 seconds of invisibility, and 897 damage per second. So for comparison, Tesla has a damage per second of 277. And people already complain that Tesla kind of takes care of things too fast. Let's see. E-barbs. Okay, E-barbs are... Okay, I don't have that max, unfortunately. I don't have a lot to compare since I don't have much uh, maxed here. But, okay, Sparky's damage per second... Well, it does 1,300 area damage at tourney standard and 4 second hit speed, so that's just about 350 or so damage per second. Um, Archer Queen at tourney standard is going to be significantly more. I, I can't really um, get its stats there, but you get the point. It just has insane DPS, and I think it probably needs to cost 2 elixir. No idea what...